Hello everybody, just a quick update. Got a few new members following along on the sheep and the dogs. Thank you guys for joining. Glad to share. Anybody else has sheep or something similar, some livestock, be feel free to share your site and stuff in the comments down below. But yeah, the sheep and the dogs are doing good. We're into winter now and the forage is holding out pretty decent, so they don't cover a whole lot of ground. They're pretty small animals. And they've got a lot of food up here to eat, so they're doing okay. I've been involved in fall harvest trying to finish up soybeans and stuff and corn and get that stuff all out of the field and cover crops planted and getting fairly big into the regenerative side of agriculture doing the cover crops and soil health initiative stuff it's been working out pretty well so far we had a pretty rough year with crops this year it's just stupid wet in Missouri and Kansas this year but things are working out okay as you can see the sheep are doing well no losses yet thanks probably to the dogs and healthy pretty healthy pasture and forages it's all the years keeping me company <laughs> until I pointed the camera at her she's like nope I'm gone got it she's thinking oh I gotta get out here and act like I'm busy <laughs> yeah they're munching away doing really well pretty cold but I think the high today is about 35 I'm not sure it's 35 34 33 or something like that it's gotten colder all day that, that's winter we've had pretty nice weather the last week or so been above normal temperature wise pretty dry might give you guys a quick view of my solar charger I built just made it out of a little country tough wagon from um, Orsland's Orsland Farm and Home and then I bought the solar panel controller from Amazon just use a couple of ground rods that I plopping the ground by hand. Seems to have worked okay so far. Inside this, I've got a Stafix charger. That's a six, X6i. And I've got two big pickup batteries. And then the solar charger controller, charge controller. And I rigged my lid with these straps so that you don't want to go back so far. Just a quick and sloppy fix, but works okay. And I have never seen those batteries drop below 13 volts so far this year running uh, six pieces of the Premier One, 164 foot. Uh, it's a mix between single spike posts and double spike posts, but the 106, they're all 164 foot lengths of fence. Six of them end to end is what this pin is, and uh, that's the first pin I think I've set up where I had them all set up at once in, in a contiguous fence line. But it's handled it just fine, and we've had a lot of cloudy weather, cold and rain, snow, and everything else. It's worked just fine so far. And I built a power post of my own. I wasn't going to pay $300 for that stupid thing. Yeah, that works pretty well, but you got to be careful how you set the reels on there. Those PowerFlex, I think those are PowerFlex reels. They've got a rubber handle on them and they are insulated well enough that they don't ground out through those handles. And yeah, I just set that 
homemade power post stuff and whenever they get the pin chewed out to where they need to move if I don't have time like I said I've been busy with crop harvest trying to finish that up and if I'm in a hurry I can set up an additional pin outside of the netting with the poly braid and step in posts and then I can subdivide it if I want to set it up big enough and give them several extra days of grazing and then I can run I run them back into the netting at night just for protection from coyotes so I feel good sleeping <laughs> and then the next day or whenever they're ready to move I can before I let them out of the netting I can set up a new poly braid fence uh, pin and I can rotate them over it takes me a good by myself takes me a good four hours to pull that netting all down and move it and set it back up and plus I've got you see I've got a lot more sitting over there that I know a strip out so I don't have any ground outs from stops and stickers and everything else in the way which is convenient in a way but it's kind of a pain to have to do it but a lawnmower doesn't waste as much forage because it's fairly narrow as a three point I've got a three point brush hog that's six foot wide of course it chews up a lot of forage in the process of cutting out a fence line but that's what we've been doing and that's worked pretty well for me so far and the sheep are barely fat and happy walk over here and take a look at them yeah Greg's dogs have been doing really well <laughs> they live out here 24 7 365 and they seem just as happy as they can be I feel bad for them being over here it's really nice place to be when the weather's nice but the days we've had that were snowy and cold we had a few days there that were down the single digits overnight in the morning and that was pretty raunchy I felt bad for them being over here but their livestock I mean it's what they were born and bred to do so. I've got shelter set up for them and They've got all oh, got plenty of food and water, so they fared through it like it wasn't anything. I it's mostly just me as a dog person and pet owner worrying about them all the time. But anyway, <laughs> sheep are growing their winter coats out. They're getting really fluffy. They look awesome. I've just been having so much fun. It's so enjoyable watching these things come out here and eat every day, checking on them. I check on them twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. They just go about their business eating. As long as they've got food, they're pretty happy. Got a couple that have stayed kind of smallish and haven't seemed to grow quite like the rest of them. I guess those are probably the first culls showing up. That one and that one was like that, but it's kind of catching up with the others. That one back there at the back, she's a little bit wimpy. Not bad, but I, I mean the differences are fairly subtle. That one back there is by far the smallest one. She seems fat enough, she's just small. So maybe that's just her nature, her stat stature, I don't know. She's, she seems to do okay. If the person's going to call for, for an ideal animal in a herd, you know, animals like that I think it would probably leave the farm that as long as she can produce a viable lamb that's healthy, I guess 
you can breed up for size. I've got a good healthy big ram that should that should throw good lambs. Maybe his size will rub off on her on her lambs. I don't know. We'll see. My flock's too small to be calling animals out of at this point, I think. And hopefully we can add to it next year. Should be dropping lambs in May. I'll put the ram back in with these December 1st. And hopefully we'll have a good lamb crop. And I'll probably pick up a few more animals from Greg, God willing, and finances allow. Yeah, I, I'd be happy with having quite, quite a few more animals. Certainly have the land for it. This is just one farm, and it's going to take several times increase of animals to even come close to grazing this place off responsibly. So, anyway, well, I've got to get out of here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.